Friends, this is Corinne from Spirea Herbs, and today we are in my front yard, which you folks don't get to see too often. Uh, it's mostly in the shade, so we haven't done too, too much here for a few reasons. One, we didn't want to bite off more than we could chew. Two, finances, of course. Um, and if you can pan the camera up over here, you can see that there's a lot of work to be done. The, the home was neglected for a few years. So this front yard uh, needs a little bit of TLC, but that spot right over there, and I'll get my husband to kind of pan in over there, that will be hopefully a home to a future, future herb garden. But today, the reason I'm out here today is to harvest catnip. And uh, the reason I'm harvesting catnip is I want to make infused witch hazel. And uh, catnip contains an essential oil known as nepetalactone. And nepetalactone in recent scientific studies have been shown to be 10 times more effective than DEET. So catnip makes a fantastic insect repellent. And if I, you know, if I were going to choose what I'm gonna put on my family, I would absolutely choose to put catnip versus a commercial uh, DEET containing bug spray. So I'm gonna show you um, what catnip looks like. So we're gonna get some nice close-up shots, how I'm going to harvest it. And then uh, later in my kitchen, will uh, take a look um, at how to infuse it in witch hazel. So mint family plants always have a square stalk to them and they almost always flower up top here and catnip I find is one of the first ones to, to go to flower. Now normally if I'm making tincture I would probably take about maybe 30% of the plant but because I'm going to be making bug spray and I don't want to waste anything I'm gonna take about, I would say five or six of these flowering stalks, and I just use scissors. I find them, especially when I'm cutting mint family plants, you know, you don't wanna cause any undue damage. Um, scissors just work better. And so what I'll do is I'll take the entire stalk, and then once we get inside, I'll show you what I'll do with them from there. But I do want some of these to go to seed, so I have catnip next year. Um, yeah, so all I'll do is, and I'll get a close-up shot of this, is get down to the base as far as you can, take your scissors, and cut. And like I said, I'll probably take about five or six of the flowering stalks. You probably won't need as many. I, I make bug spray uh, to sell, so I'll be making a larger amount of witch hazel, but for your family, you can probably get away with even two or three flowering stalks. So I'll continue to harvest, and then I will see you inside. And we're back in my kitchen with catnip. Um, another, uh, something I forgot to mention when we were outside, another identifying feature of catnip is that the leaves and the flowering portions are opposite of each other as opposed to alternating up the stem. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, and it's pretty easy to do, I'm just going to pick off all of the leaves and the flowers. Um, and the reason we don't use the stalk is because from a medicinal standpoint, it's pretty inert. Um, what the stalk of, and you can just pick the top part of the flower, I just popped it right off. And then this can go into the compost. Um, the stalk is pretty inert. Uh, it, it serves the purpose in a plant um, for holding it up and so that it, uh, the leaves can reach the sun. And of course, the important job of transportation, of water and nutrient transportation. But because of that, it's mostly just fiber and it doesn't have uh, a lot of medicinal um, properties to it. So and that's a pretty standard uh, thing across plant species. And so now sometimes you can speed, I'll see if it'll work with this plant. You can speed up the process by actually just running your hand down the stalk. See how I did that? And everything just kind of came off. Doesn't always work. And I'll work as quickly as I can. And while I'm doing this, I'm gonna show you what anybody who works with herbs or is a herbalist needs to have. That is a mezzaluna. And a mezzaluna uh, gets his name obviously because the blade of the knife is shaped like a moon. 
And once you see me chopping my herbs, you'll understand you know, why, <laughs> why you would want to have one for yourself. Uh, you'll also need just some witch hazel, and of course you don't need this much, um, but witch hazel is pretty easy to find in drug stores or in the pharmacy sections of grocery stores. It's usually, um, depends, it can be found in like the first aid section, or and sometimes it'll be found um, in more of a cosmetic section, because a lot of people use witch hazel for um, like face toner. So you'll need a jar. Of, and I, I'm not sure if this will be the right size. We'll see once I'm done chopping. Probably not, based on what I'm looking at. Which, uh, some witch hazel and your herbs. And so you just want to chop these. The, whenever you're chopping herbs, in general, um, the rule of thumb is to work as quickly as you can. Um, you don't want the herbs to be exposed to too much oxygen. And so if you're chopping slowly, or if you halfway chop your herbs and take a break, all of those pieces that you've cut are now exposed to oxygen and everything's going to oxidize um, and that will reduce the medicinal properties of your plant. So even though I'm making this for bug spray, I do want to work as quickly as possible. So once you start chopping, make sure you finish. And then um, once you're done, you're going to place them in your jar and cover with witch hazel. So I'll just start chopping and you can see right away why you want to have a mezzaluna. Now you want to chop pretty finely. It's like this delicate balance between not wanting your herbs to oxidize and not chopping finely enough. So once I'm done, I'll show you how fine you want it. And as far as storage goes, you're going to want to store your herbs in a cool, dark place. Uh, Light or sunlight will also uh, oxidize any medicines that you're making. And uh, if you can get amber bottles, that's even better. I tend to use mason jars and store them in a cabinet somewhere. Um, one day I hope to paint the outside of the mason jar. So you can see that's about as finely as I've chopped my herbs. And I think I'm going to need a larger jar, so I'll be right back. You can just watch my beautiful herbs. <laughs> and I'm going to place them in a one liter jar, uh, but depending on how much you have and how much you're making. So you just want to pack them in the jar. I don't like to waste. And then open up your witch hazel. And you'll pour it in, and I probably won't fill this jar all the way, just because I know roughly how many bug spray orders I have to make, so I'll probably fill about three quarters or so. And the trick is you want to make sure all of the herbs are covered. So one of my favorite things to use is actually is a chopstick. Uh, I, I can't believe how Often I use chopsticks when I'm making my medicine. So stir everything up, place a lid on it. You'll want to label your jar, especially if you're making a lot of herbal goodies. You want to make sure you know what's in it. Label it with the date, what you're using as your menstruum. So in this case, the menstruum is the witch hazel, and that's what's going to be extracting the chemical constituents. And you want to let this sit, I mean, at least a week if you can. Um, I would say up to about three weeks. And once you're ready to make your bug spray, all you have to do is strain the herbs out. And I tend to use about half of half witch hazel and half water. And then I add a little bit of glycerin and some essential oils. And I'll write a little bit more about that on my blog um, and let you know what essential oils. Okay, thank you, honey. <laughs> let you know what essential oils I can I use in my bug spray. And uh, you can read about that. Uh, probably later this week. Thanks so much and have a great day.